Good afternoon and welcome to Euromed Migration Talks. Uh, today I will be accompanied by Thomas Eriksson, notorious Swedish behavioral expert, active lecturer and best-selling author of Surrounded by Idiots, a uh, fantastic book uh, published in uh, 2014, uh, one of the most sold uh, uh, Sweden's best-selling non-fiction books with over 2 million copies sold worldwide and translated into 41 languages. Thomas, thank you so much for being with us. Now, uh, today, today we'll be taking a different angle. Over the past few months, we have interviewed prominent migration experts from policymakers to politicians, from journalists to academics to discuss about the evolving migration narrative in the Mediterranean and beyond. But today we want to take a different angle by looking at the impact of uh, behavioral sciences in influencing narratives. Now, uh, Thomas, in your book, uh, which uh, I found a, a fantastic read. It was actually a birthday gift given to me last year. Uh, you identify four macro groups of human behaviors, red, yellow, green, and blue. And you divide them along two main axes, extrovert, introvert, and task-oriented versus people-oriented. Now, could you briefly summarize them for us? Absolutely. This is the rather famous DISC profile uh, that has been colored. Red behavior stands for dominance, uh, fast thinkers, action oriented, you know, bam, a bit aggressive to some people. Uh, the yellow behavior is uh, uh, commu commu very talkative, very good communicators, happy, always smiling, the sun is shining somewhere, I guess. And the green ones are on the introvert side. They are more looking for stability, more calm, more, more let's say, caring, sharing for, our, for others. And um, the blue ones are the analysts, analytical guys. They look for details and facts and following rules is really, really important. So there you have it in really brief. <laughs> Of course, then of course the, the book goes a lot deeper into that. Uh, and if we think about these categories, now how do you think these different uh, uh, behaviors can influence the interpretation of a specific narrative? So for instance, will the principles that you just explained uh, influence their vision or opinion on a, on a specific phenomenon, let's say the economy, or in our specific case, the migration phenomena? How, how would they react? Well, everybody's listening on, on their own frequencies, so to speak. That is just the way it is. And this, this system is, of course, a simplification of how humans actually are wired. People are really more complex than we can, we can just sort of describe it in some assessment. But still, there are some things that you can look for. And, and for one thing, red behavior, they will read the headlines and nothing else. If the headline doesn't uh, interest them, they would just turn the page, so to speak. Uh, the yellow ones, they might read um, the first uh, paragraph, maybe, and see what's going on. And if that doesn't uh, intrigue them or, or makes them inspired, they will just leave it. The green ones might read the whole article, as a comparison, and, and uh, maybe get some stomach ache and feel bad for people. And the blue ones, they will look for the diagrams and the, the facts, the little square at the bottom of the, the article where the details are, you know, the facts and the statistics. And you can reach all of them different, in a different way, but you need to actually make them listen on all these levels at the same time, because you don't know who is listening or who is reading. If it's online or in, in, in a newspaper, that doesn't matter because they are sort of listening and reading and, and looking out for different things all the time. This we know, of course, but you can, you can, you can tweak your message a little bit if you know more about these things. Of course, and moving on to that, then my question is about the so-called polarization of recent narratives. Uh, many reports indicate that also social media has contributed to this polarization on numerous narratives. And in particular, within our field of work, uh, we have produced numerous reports that indicate how specifically the migration narrative is strongly polarized. Uh, how do these personality traits that uh, you just identify play a role in the development of a narrative? And uh, do you think that certain types are more inclined to be multipliers of ideas than others? Okay, that's uh, several questions at the same time, to be honest. Well, to begin with, 
of course, um, I mean, let's say somebody who is looking for, let's say, the human side, the humanitarian side of, of, of the whole issue, not talking about what's true or what's not true, but who is listening, that would be the relation-oriented people, meaning the yellows and the green ones, who are always striving for a good relationship with people they know and people they, they don't know. That doesn't mean that they are not interested in tasks or, 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 or certain uh, topics. It just says that the, the people, let's say, the, the, the focus on, on people and, and relationships will be more, more emphasized. And on, on this, at the same token, when you talk to reds and blue people, they are task oriented. They are looking for results or processing details and so on, facts oriented. Does not mean they don't care about people, but the tasks, the, the tasks will always be prioritized, so to speak. And, and it's easy to say, let's say reds and blues, they don't care for people because they are task oriented. We have, we have, a, we have a system, we have a matrix here that actually proves this. That's not the case. We have to also look deeper when it comes to, because the colors only covers the behaviors. It's not really personalities, if, if, you, if, you, if I dare to correct you there, but it's, it's a part of the personality, but there's more to a personality than just the behaviors, which is on the surface. Um, beneath the surface, you have, for instance, uh, the drivers, the motivators, what actually gets them going. And certain different people are, are getting energy from different things. Some people are, or, or theoretical, have theor 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 theoretical drivers. Some people have this utilitarian driver. Uh, they look for results or money or whatever. Some people have this social driver, which means they care for other people, regardless of their color. So you might have a red person that actually cares for other people. So you have to dig a little bit deeper. But the thing is, what you see is the behaviors. You see the behaviors and that's what you react upon. So when people get angry and mad, you see the behavior, then you, you interact with them in that way. So for a, red, for a red person, for instance, he will lose his temper quicker than anybody else. He's to a green person, they are sort of contradictory to each other. And the green one will feel aggression from the red one. So that's gonna be a rather big challenge for them to even discuss any topic. And if it's a, if it's a tricky topic, if it's a difficult one, like, like uh, what we are discussing here, well, you will get the polarization rather quickly. Another, on the, and the same thing, uh, I mean, yellow people, they are positive and, and, and delighted and good communicators, and the blue ones are more, you know, details, uh, risk managers, so to speak, looking for problems, looking for risk, always looking for something that might, uh, you know, just go uh, in the wrong direction. And, uh, as the yellow ones are visionary thinkers. Oh, we may solve this problem. We can do it, you know. And the blue one, without, so how? How, how? how can we do it? What's the plan? Well, we, we figure that one out. You know? But we have to be nice to people. They could be our potential friends, you know, coming in. So let's bring them in. So it's really difficult for them to discuss because they don't understand each other. And on top, beneath the, beneath the surface, we have the drivers as well. So it, it will be more complicated than, than you might think and then of course when people get scared they react uh, in in a certain way uh, stress and 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 uh, uh, let's say uh, fear that triggers certain things within uh, different people they, they react on different things reds don't like to 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 lose their their control yellow don't like to be excluded uh, the greens hates conflicts and the blues, they don't like to make a fool out of themselves. So they need the facts all the time. So the picture is rather complex to be, to be honest, but you can find it out if you really look for it. You mentioned emotions, you mentioned uh, uh, anger, you mentioned fear. So over the past few years uh, in, in communication at large, there is a, um, a significant debate about the facts versus emotion battle. Do I use more fact to communicate a narrative or do I use more emotions to be more, to be more empathic to people? In your opinion, uh, uh, communicators, that work in a specific field which is highly polarized, how can they balance the use of facts, data, reports, charts, graphs, versus emotions, like the story of people, in this case, that are migrating from a country to another? Hmm. But to begin with, most people are emotional. 
we base our, let's say, our decisions on emotions, on our feelings. That, that goes for basically everybody, although the blue ones deny this. <laughs> they, they work with Excel sheets, you know, so that, that's, but still, but you can, you can, you can, the psychology is really, really clear. We, we, we know this as a fact that emotions are, are, are running the majority of everybody that you will ever meet, ever. But the thing is this, you can reach each and every individual's emotions by using specific triggers. I mean, a red person, if he can see a result or something going really quick, efficiency, he will feel positive emotions. If somebody's in, the, in his way, he will feel bad emotions and will just you know, put them aside, so to speak. Uh, yellow people, they, they, they like to have fun. I mean, they need to feel joyful about the, the, the day and, and see the sunshine and, and all of these things. And they will have positive emotions. If you say, shut up and listen, they will get negative emotions. Maybe nobody would love that kind of comment, but they will react because now you stepped on their ego, you know. But I'm really entertaining, yeah, yeah but not here. You know. Be quiet. And green people, they don't like conflicts and they don't like changes. They are really change averts, so to speak. They use this passive aggressive method by saying, okay, or no, or yes, or whatever, and then do absolutely nothing. It's really hard to move them from one side of the room to the other side of the room because they don't like to go there because they don't like it. Even if you could prove to them it's better over here. Yeah, but I, I'm over here, you know. So, and if they have made up their mind in any any question, it doesn't matter what it is, they will not change their mind unless it feels okay to change their mind. And so facts won't reach to them whatsoever. The blue ones are argue with because if you can prove your point of view, if you can say, well, it's, it's one million, and they say, how, how, how do you know? Where do you get the number from? Well, you ha I have it here, you know, and they can show, show you the statistics and, and the equation and all the background data. Okay, mm, that seems fair, okay. Do you have some, some, some comparison, some other kind of equation? But if you can prove the facts, they will follow you. But the thing is, as I started here, everybody's moved by emotions. Uh, we know this. I mean, let's say you try to sell something. Marketeers have known this for, I don't know, 50 years or something. So they try to, that's why commercials look the way they do. They don't just say, okay, this is what this bicycle can do. This is the cost, you know, buy it online and click here, you know, because you have to have smiley faces, you know, and somebody's is biking and, and uh, elderly couple here, you know, walking their dog, you know, you see things that, that touches you in here. It's like, oh, what a beautiful picture. That's your emotion speaking. It has nothing to do with the bike itself. You know, it doesn't matter. But this is what they do. Uh, one thing that I have asked myself is, how, why, why, I mean, the, the decisions makers of, of the EU European Union, for instance, it's just an example, or, or anywhere, or politicians or, or, or whatever, they could use this knowledge in some way, but then, of course, you have to use it in a good way. Otherwise, you will quite easily step into manipulation, actually. But just making people listen could be one step. Writing thick headlines, you know, black headlines for the red ones, or, or happy, smiley uh, narratives for, for the yellow ones, or, or, or you know, uh, let's say for the whole community, built uh, messages for the green ones and, and Excel sheets for the blue ones. Of course you can do this, but you have to consider it quite a lot actually, because it's a complex thing to, to do, but it can be done. I would like to conclude with, with a piece of advice that I'd like you to give to, to our audience. So uh, you have advised uh, important companies worldwide and trained leaders and managers all over the world. Uh, Thomas, what would be your suggestions for policymakers and uh, institutional communicators to better communicate with citizens when it comes to polarizing issues like, in this case, a migration in the Mediterranean, what would be your set of advice uh, uh, to them today? Well, to begin with, they have to be honest. They have to say, they have to, they have to tell the speak the truth. They shouldn't, I don't think they should actually, they would have to say, this is the, these are the numbers. This is what it actually looks like. Looks like. Uh, here we have this, well, all the numbers, all the data, don't lie about the data. Don't, don't lie about what actually is happening. 
you know, what is actually, actually going on. And don't be so quick in putting your own narrative on top of the facts. I mean, we talk about politicians. I, I understand. I, I hear my own words here. But they shouldn't sort of tweak the message too early. Let's see what people would like to hear because the politicians are here for us, right? And if we dislike a message or we like a message, then you can use that information. If there are something bigger than the, 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 the populations of uh, the European countries don't understand, well, teach us, train us, give us the information, give us the proper information, but also listen to, to the whole community. Don't listen to the extremes. I, I don't think you should listen too much to people over there or people over there because the extremes are loud and noisy and, and extreme. You can tell from the word, you shouldn't pay attention to them actually. I don't on, on you know usually I don't talk politics at all but we have extremes on both, extremes on both sides so try to sort of narrow it down a little bit and don't listen to the noisiest ones regardless of where they are on the scale listen to the majority and then you have to ask the majority you have to actually have a have an open way of communicating and and then say yeah well we have over you people can contact us they can email us they can come to meetings they can listen to politicians talking on, on how do i communicate with my eu representatives from sweden i don't know i could probably figure it out but i don't know i don't feel there's an open line to them so to speak because they are isolated several miles from 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 me so i don't know and that might be one of the things when when the politicians are distancing themselves from from the people they are representing we will have problems i would say um, it's not an easy thing to 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 solve obviously but it can be solved if we have politicians who are actually there for us and not for themselves sounds like a cliche when i say it but i really believe in this so honesty do not press your narrative onto others heads listen to the whole community and uh, listen less to the noisiest ones even though they seem to be uh, sometimes mistakenly and uh, deceitively the the majority thomas thank you so much for being with us it was a real pleasure talking to you uh, again um, all our followers can find your books onto your website and your social media and uh, definitely it was a lot of food for thought. Thank you, thank you very much for giving us a different angle onto understanding the migration narrative. Uh, I hope we'll be in touch again. Thank you so much.